Hey guys, hope you're well. So in this lesson, we're gonna look at calculations involving sound. So what we know now is that sound travels as a longitudinal wave. So sound travels as a longitudinal wave. So when you talk to someone, the sound is going from your uh, voice box uh, to the person's eardrum as a longitudinal wave. So because it's a wave, we know that we can use all of the different wave equations such as this one. We could use the one over period for frequency. For, for period, we could say one over frequency. Uh, we could also remember the following formulas that frequency is the number of waves divided by the number of seconds, whereas period is the number of seconds divided by the number of waves, for example. Then, if they give you a type of question where they use distance, speed, and time, well then, of course, we could go back to those formulas. Whoops, let's use a small t over there. We could go back to those formulas as well. So these are the formulas that we've been looking at when we looked at transverse waves, um, longitudinal waves, and sound is a longitudinal wave, so we can still use all of these formulas. Now, something we need to speak about before we start looking at calculations is when we're talking about an echo, okay? Because that comes up a lot in, um, in these sound calculations that we're gonna look at. So, I'm sure you've heard an echo before. Now, let's say, for example, um, you've got this open field, okay? And here's you standing on the open field, okay? All happy. And uh, here is a big mountain, okay? This is a big mountain. Now, I'm sure you've done it before where you, I don't know, hiking in the mountains or something and you shout as loud as you can, okay? So you're gonna shout and your um, the sound from your mouth is gonna go towards the mountain. But then a few seconds later, maybe one or two seconds later, you hear yourself shouting back at you, like the sound that you, whatever you said, it comes back at you. And that is called an echo. What happens is that the sound travels from your voice box um, as a sound wave, hits the mountain. Now the mountain is solid and it cannot absorb the sound, so it reflects the sound and that sound gets reflected back towards you. And that is what you are actually hearing. Now if there was no mountain there, well then you wouldn't hear the echo because then the sound just keeps going on and on and on and on and there's no way for it to come back at you, okay? So that's what an echo is. So we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of sound calculations now. Some of them are gonna have echo in them, and then I'll show you what to do. So here we start with the calculations. Now stick around for all of them because they're gonna get quite complicated, uh, especially the last question. Well, we're gonna have this one where we talk about a steel railing, but then we're gonna have another question with a steel railing, and this is the last question. And this one is pretty challenging, okay? So let's get started with the more easier type so you can just build up nicely. So they tell us that a guitar string emits sound with a frequency of 40 hertz. Assume that the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second, determine the wavelength. Okay, so if we had to go use our formula V equals to F multiplied by lambda, then we have the speed, okay? The speed is the same as velocity in these types of questions, so we could say 340 equals, now the frequency is 40, and the wavelength, well, that's what we're trying to find. So to get the wavelength by itself, you'd say 340 divided by 40, and if you had to work that out, you get 8.5 meters. In this question, they say that a person shouts now it says, assume the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. How long will it take for the sound to reach the person's friend who is 70 meters away? Okay, so we've got a person standing over here and this person is going to shout. Now that shouting is gonna be a sound that is gonna travel through the air and then it's gonna get to the friend who's standing over here, um, which is uh, 70 meters away. So we know, here we're not gonna use this formula because that formula uses velocity, frequencies, wavelengths. Instead, we're gonna use the distance, speed, time formula, okay? And so what do they want? They want, us to, they want us to work out how long, okay? So they want us to calculate time. So time is equal to distance over speed. 
So time, once again, is equal to distance over speed. And so we could say that the distance is 70 and the speed is 340. And if you calculate this, you end up with 0 0.21 seconds. Now we're gonna start getting to echo. Okay, so here it says you are standing a certain distance from a cliff. Okay, so a cliff is like a mountain, okay? So there's the cliff. And here's you standing. And there is a certain distance between you and the cliff, okay? Now it says that you shout, okay? So if you shout, your sound waves are gonna go from your mouth or from your voice box to the cliff and then it's gonna hit the cliff It'll hit the cliff, whoopsie, it'll, as I, once again, it'll hit the cliff and then it'll come back towards you. And then you're gonna hear yourself, you're gonna, it's almost like you're gonna, hear, you're gonna hear exactly what you shouted. That is an echo, I'm sure you've had an echo before where you shout loud towards like a mountain and then, you know, like sometimes you stand and you're like, hello, and then you hear the sound coming back, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Maybe I was just lonely hiking one day and I decided to make some friends with the mountains. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you've ever, I'm sure you've done it. You shout out and then you hear your echo coming back. Anyways, let's move on. So it takes four seconds, okay? So that takes four seconds to do that whole journey from, from the mouth to the cliff and then back again. That process takes um, four seconds. Four seconds. Okay, and then it says assume that sound, assume sounds move through air, or let's just say sound moves through air at 340. Okay, so we have the speed. So the best formulas here are gonna be the distance, speed, and time formulas, not the, not the frequency wavelength formula. So they said how far, okay? So let's go calculate distance by saying speed multiplied by time. And so if you say speed, 340 multiplied by four, that's gonna give you 1360. But wait, that is not the answer. That four seconds is when you go all the way from here, hit the cliff and back. That takes four seconds. So you now need to divide that answer by two and then that will give you 680. Now that is the answer, okay? Because you don't wanna use all the way, you just wanna know what is the distance to the cliff. Another option that learners often ask me about is can we maybe instead of using four seconds, could we rather just use two seconds? Yes, you can. So you could just say 340 times two and that would also give you 680 meters, okay? This one's pretty interesting. So. You are holding your ear to a steel railing. Now, let me show you what I mean by steel railing. So, you know, at most schools, you've got this type of railing, okay? Um, where if you bang your hand on it, it makes that like weird noise, okay? That's a steel railing. So, it says that you are holding your ear to a steel railing. So, maybe you're standing over here, okay? So, this is you standing over here and you holding your ear, you, your head's on the railing and you're listening. Okay, now it says that you have a friend who is standing 200 meters away. So let's say your friend is standing over here. Okay, so here's your friend. And that distance, let's rather do it like that. That distance is 200 meters. Okay, now it says assume that the speed of sound in air is 340 and, in, and it's 4,000 in steel. Okay, because something interesting is gonna happen. Your friend, um, taps on the railing. So your friend is gonna like bang the railing and that sound is gonna travel. But now, would you agree with me that if there was someone standing down here on the first floor, are they also gonna hear when this person hits the railing? Of course they are. That is because sound travels from the railing. It's gonna travel through the air, okay? So it's gonna travel through the air, so like that. And it's gonna travel to this person's ear but it's also gonna travel in the railing itself. It's gonna travel through the railing, the, 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 the solid, okay? And remember we've learned that sound travels very fast in solids, okay? That is why they're giving us two different pieces of information over here. So the first question says, how long will it take for the sound to reach you through the air? Okay, so we know these formulas, distance, speed, and time. And so if you had to go calculate time, it's gonna be distance over speed. And so the distance is 200. Now the speed 
in A is 340, okay? Now if you had to go calculate that, this is for A by the way, you're gonna end up with 0 0.59 seconds. Okay, now if we do question B, how long will it take for the sound to reach you through the steel? Well then you can just go um, like this, and it's also gonna be 200 meters, but now the speed in the steel is 4,000, 4,000, and so that's gonna be 0 0.05 seconds. And so what we can see is that it travels much faster in steel. Okay, so let's do two more examples now. So it's this one, and then we've got one more on this slide, and this is the one that's really good. And then we're done, and those are like the main types of calculations that you need to know with sound. It says that you are standing at the edge of a lake. Okay, so here is a beautiful lake. On the opposite side of the lake is a cliff. Okay, so maybe there's like a mountain or some type of cliff over here, okay? And you are standing on the edge, okay. So maybe there's like some nice sand over here, I don't know, but that's where we're standing. Okay, so here we're standing. Now that, and, and, and then this is the lake. Okay, let's maybe just show that it's a lake, there's the lake, and Okay, no, I don't know. I'm sure you understand. This is the lake, okay? And on the opposite side of a lake is a cliff. You decide to shout towards the cliff. So you shout towards the cliff. There we go. And then you hear the echo after 1.8 seconds. So what that means is that the sound is going to go from your mouth all the way to here and back. And that process is going to take 1.8 seconds. Now it says how long is the lake? Well, we've got the distance, speed, and time formulas. Okay, now it says how long, so you could use distance. So distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. Now I'm just going to use the speed, um, sorry, I'm just going to use the time of 1.8, but you must remember that that is 1.8 there and back. Now if you had to go calculate that, that's going to give you 612 meters, but that is there and back. So you're then going to divide that by 2, so you're going to say 612 divided by 2, and that's going to give you 306 meters. All right, here's our last question, and this one's the more interesting kind of question. So it says, you have your ear pressed against a steel railing. Okay, so we've seen something like this already. And so, once again, let's say that you are standing over here. Okay, and you've got a friend who's standing all the way down here. Now they say that your friend hits the railing with a stick, okay? Now obviously the sound is going to travel through the railing and it's going to come to you here where you, where you are holding your ear on the railing. But that sound is also going to travel in the air because even people standing down here would also be able to hear it. So it, it, it also travels through the air, okay? It does both. Because, as I said, if someone was standing over here, they would also be able to hear the person hitting the railing. That means that the sound travels through air as well, okay? I hope that that part makes sense. Now it says, that, now this is interesting. The sound that you hear through the air comes two seconds after the initial sound that you hear through the railing. Ooh, that's interesting. So they're not saying that the time is two seconds, they're just saying that it comes two seconds after. How far is your friend standing? So how far away is your friend standing? Ooh, this is a good one. So remember that this is not two seconds for the, that they're just saying two seconds after. So what we can do, let's say that the steel, which, one, which one's faster? We know that steel um, sound, moves through, or, or let's rather just do this, sorry. Um, let's say um, the, the, the time for the steel, let's say that that is x, okay? Now, then the time for the air would be x plus 2. Let me explain that part. Let's say, for example, it takes five seconds. It takes five seconds to go into, through the steel. Let's say that takes five seconds as an example. Then they said 
that the sound that you hear through the air comes two seconds after the initial sound that you hear through the railing. So if this takes five seconds, then the one that you hear through the air would be seven seconds because it would be two seconds longer. So if the sound through the railing is x, then the sound through the air must just be x plus two. You can't say two x because that means double, okay? Now, would you agree with me that the distance that the sound is going to travel through the railing will be the same as the distance that the travel, that the air, well, that it will be the same as the distance that the sound travels through the air, okay? Because the distance from the person to this person, it's the same, whether the sound travels through the air or whether the sound travels through the steel, the distance is the same. So I'm gonna say here that the distance for the steel is gonna be the same as the distance for the air. Then I'm gonna use the distance formula which is distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. And I'm gonna do it for both of them. So I'm gonna do it for the steel. Well, let me just write it here. The distance of the steel will be the speed through the steel multiplied by the time through the steel. Okay, I'm just using this formula, but I'm using it specifically for the steel. Let's write that a bit better. So the distance through the steel will be the same, will be equal to the speed through the steel, multiplied by the time through the steel. Now the distance for the air will be equal to the speed going through the air, multiplied by the time going through the air. But we said that these two parts are equal to each other. That is what we just said over here. So then I can substitute the S steel multiplied by the time for the steel, and I can make it that equal to the speed for the air multiplied by the time for the air. Now I can just go fill things in. So the speed of the steel, they told us is uh, 4,000, so 4,000. The time is going to be, um, for the steel is gonna be x. So I'm just gonna say 4,000 x. Now the speed through the air, well that's 340. And then the time in the air, well that's gonna be x plus two. So now you must put it in a bracket like that. Okay, so now we're just gonna go say 4,000x equals to 340x plus 680. And then we're just gonna solve for x. I'm gonna take all of this to the left, or I'm just gonna take the 340x to the left. So we're gonna have 4,000x take away 340x equals to 680. And so on the left, we're gonna end up with 3,660x equals to 680, and then to get x by itself, you are going to divide by that, and so if you had to work out x, now don't round off, this is not the final answer, so I'm just gonna put um, the first four numbers that I see, so 1857, um, dot, 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 seconds, because x is a time, so it's in seconds, but that's not the answer. They said, they said the question is, um, how far away is your friend? So what is the distance? So now that we know x, we can go work out the distance by either using the steel one or you can do the air one. If you use the steel, then you're gonna use, um, uh, it's the speed of steel multiplied by the time of steel. And so that's gonna be um, 4,000 multiplied by the time for steel, which is x, but we now know that x is that, so we'll put that value, 0 0.1857, blah, blah, blah. And if you had to work that out, you would end up with 743.17 meters. And then if you wanted to rather use the distance for the air, traveling through air, it should give us the exact same answer because we said that they are the same, but then you're gonna use the speed through air multiplied by the time in air. And so that would be 340, then multiplied. Now the time for air is gonna be x plus two. So it's gonna be this number plus two, okay? So it would be 2.1857, um, blah, blah, blah. And if you had to go work that out, you're gonna end up with exactly 743 point. 
1-7.